this is Pink for Life. I'm gonna do a full review of this guy now. Uh, I did do a live stream if you wanted to check that out, answer a few questions, but I wanted to do a full stream, uh, a full um, review of this because um, people had questions, especially about the colors and I can't really uh, do color accuracy on the YouTube app since they don't let me color correct or anything like that. So here is FT39 Jabber, their version of an MP um, blur. Packaging review. Not much going on here. Pretty standard Fans Toys Fair. It is a nice glossy box with a nice uh, kind of embossed uh, image here, which is really nice quality. Uh, the product images on the back are also quite nice. Um, this is where a, a lot of people have been letting me know that they were kind of upset about um, the change in color. So apparently they had um, a different color blue previously and now it's kind of a darker metallic blue and people were upset about that. So we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, he does come with a set of instructions, which um, are, you know, Transformers instructions. That It's always pretty hard to get these right. Um, it does miss a few key steps um, uh, and I'll show off some of these things and some tips that will hopefully get you there a little bit easier. And then they show the Target Master. Um, they don't show the replacement chest piece, which uh, I wasn't aware they're gonna have. Here is the stack card. Nice hard plastic. Buy on the back, as well as the stats. Out of the box itself, he comes in a nice embossed, as usual, FT39. Uh, he comes with the bot himself. Here it is, and, and I have him um, accurate to how he came, at least in my version. So I'll tell you guys what you need to do to get him actually in robot mode. He comes with a couple of guns, as well as his target master. And then he has an alternate face and an alternate chest. So um, first and foremost, let's actually deal with getting him into proper robot mode. So the first thing I noticed was what is going on here. Um, so the first thing is, at least mine, they didn't have him um, with this tab activated, which actually tabs the whole upper body. I don't know why they didn't do that. Maybe they just missed it on mine. Um, but you do pull that out and tab that in, and then that does securely lock everything in place, which is nice. Uh, my neck also came undone. Some people like Toy Dojo were confused how, as to how this works. Um, you just have to press really hard on it. So you have it on a double hinge, just pull it to the front and just press really hard to lock it in. After the first one or two times, I find that um, it loosens up a bit. You wanna turn the wrist this way, unlock the legs, and then the heels themselves were not out. So just pull on these. There we go. And there we have Jabber in robot mode. And let's do a quick 360 of Jabber and I'll show off a comparison with some of the um, animation art. And he looks really nice. Pretty clean overall. Uh, he does have this big fin on the back, which doesn't hide, which isn't accurate. He does have this butt flap, which apparently is accurate. If you look over here, he does have a butt flap. If you don't like it, um, the fact that this, you can see it from the front as well, just Use these double hinges and flip it up, and it's not a big deal. He does have fairly clean legs. This one piece here I'll show off later is dedicated to just filling up that gap. And you can see pieces of die cast uh, poking out. As far as the blue, I actually like the blue. I can see how folks would say that it's not um, as accurate as the colors that they showed off before. Um, if it was a little bit more anime-ish or toonish. I can see that if it was a little bit lighter. I think it, the quality does look nice. Um, it does have a nice metallic flake finish. He does have paint on all the metallic blue places and only a couple of the light blue, light blue places have um, paint. Like I think this is painted here and then, uh, yeah. And I think this down here is painted, but really just a dark, dark blue slash kind of purple has a little bit of purple hint to it, which I don't mind too much. Um, this crest here, which um, mine is starting to come off a little bit. And then the silver. Uh, and this chest piece here, which is replaceable. So I think it looks quite nice. Um, let's look at the alternate face real quick. 
zooming in is the screaming face. It's very easy to install. We'll look at his target master real quick as well. All right. And then his guns. So his guns are painted silver. They have, this one has, this rifle has a couple of um, handles, one here, and this is for alt mode. This one also comes nicely painted. Again, another rifle. I don't know which one of these is more accurate. I think it's like this one is kind of more accurate. Um, and then it has a tab here. This this is the tab that you use for alt mode for this one for some reason. I don't know if that's having to do with um, the toy or something like that, but it's just kind of weird that it plugs in this way as opposed to underneath. Don't know why. And then the alternate translucent um, chest piece, which is kind of frosted. Um, mine is kind of oily on the inside, so you might want to wipe that down. But it's not completely clear. You can see that it's uh, a little bit um, uh, frosted, which is nice. I wasn't expecting this. It, you just need two screws, and we'll show them off later. Let's go ahead and do some quick comparisons before we move on uh, with the new MP Prime. With I think the most direct comp competitor, which is Unique Toys uh, Buzzing slash Run Man, and with the official Hot Rod, mine which doesn't really like to stand all that well. So I think height wise, um, he does make a little bit more sense overall. Although, like I said in my live stream, the Headmasters in general. Uh, from the Headmaster series, they all seem to have kind of a, a larger scale that was almost uh, MP10 in size. Uh, I did show this off before, but we'll go ahead and show a quick comparison here. Both have pretty clean backpacks, uh, and this one has repro labels, so it's not a right out of the box how, how this looks. So they have different stylings in the back, I guess. Both are quite clean. I would say overall cleanliness goes to Blur, and the overall transformation, I think, will go to... Uh, it's not Blur, to uh, Buzzing, but um, we'll get into that a little bit later, and you'll see why. The other comparison we'll have is with Buzzing's Target Master. Very tiny. Uh, this one is very basic. This one actually has some cool transformation that's going on um, to make it combine with the rifle and stuff like that, but... You can see a vast difference in size. So as far as this guy, um, he does have a good deal of articulation for the little guy. He does have a, a swivel at the neck. He, he seems like he's always looking slightly up. Uh, here, let's zoom in a little bit. He does have ball jointed shoulders, as well as a pin shoulder that comes out to the side, ball jointed elbow, which gives you kind of like a bicep swivel and a pinned elbow, so you get double joints. Uh, if you unpeg the back, Pack here, you do get waist swivel. Ball jointed hips. And knees, as well as a pin knee, so you get double joints. And then his, his um, foot is on a ball joint, which allows you to get a little bit of tilt in various directions. That's it. Um, he does have weird tab and opposing slot here, which isn't used for this. Uh, I'm wondering if it's being retooled for another Target Master or something like that, uh, but I can't figure out a way to actually use that. Transformation is very easy. We can just flip this up, get the arms folded backwards on itself, on themselves. Yeah, let's scoot out just a little bit. And they're positioned like this. The knees, we're going to rotate at the ball joint 180 degrees. They do tab together. And then you want to make use of all of that hip and pin joint to get it all the way around, not the ball joint. And then flip the handle down. Uh, these don't tab in, but they do have kind of slots that the, the feet, feet can kind of rest in. And that's it. And you can use this in his hand. Um, the downside of this is that uh, he is Decently heavy. Come on. Um, and 
he doesn't like holding, he doesn't really have enough um, friction in his shoulder to actually keep this held open, uh, held up. The other guns are not so much of a problem. Um, one of these actually has a looser tab. Yeah, this one has a looser tab, but he can hold this just fine. The larger rifle has the flip out tab. And the flip out tab, this one secures a little bit tighter. Uh, I, could, I wish the tolerance was a little bit better on both, but they're fine once you close up the fist. So yeah, that's it for the accessories uh, or the weapons for the head. If you want to replace the face, you just flip that up. Um, I re recommend using a spudger. And you get to peg the other one in. I don't think the screaming face looks all that good, but that's your option. To replace the chest uh, is a little bit more involved. You do have to untab the neck, unpeg the backpack. You need to pull out on this piece. And then you can access that with some Phillips head um, screws. So just reach in here. There we go. And you want to push out on the chest and then up. Uh, spudger tool again will probably be helpful. There we go. Put this in the opposite way and then screw these back in. Once you're done with that, you're gonna bring this back up, tab that back in, bring this tab down. There we go. So here's your alternate configuration. So articulation, let's get into that. Um, his head is on a ball joint, which has a good range of motion. You're going to look up, look down. Um, his shoulders, as I showed before, are friction. Uh, there is a screw in here that you can access once you open it up um, if you need to tighten it, but it's it's going to loosen up anyway, so you're, you're just kind of stuck with that. It's not terrible, so you can hold poses. Um, you can't do much uh, lateral with the shoulders because of the way it's molded, but it's better than um, spoiler at least. He does have a bicep swivel, which uh, I made a mistake on early in my live stream, but corrected later. Um, it, it is really tight, at least on mine, was really tight. and has some amount of, at least on mine, some rubbing or clearance issues that uh, made me miss it the first time. Double jointed elbows, wrist swivel, and um, kind of weak hands. Uh, he only has all four fingers molded together and no thumb articulation. Uh, they are, they do seem kind of small too, and I guess that's necessary for how this transforms. He does have a uh, ratcheted waist swivel here, which is very nice. He has a little finny thing back here. Uh, hip skirts that move up. This one is one giant piece that's also on a um, swivel, which you'll need for transformation. You still get a decent amount of range without having to untap, un untab it. But yeah, you will want to untab it completely if you want to get the full range going up. And then you can see his screw here. <laughs> Comes back very far. Um, laterally, he only has um, friction and it holds decently well. So no issues there. The thighs are where I really dislike it um, because of the way it transforms. It does have a thigh swivel, but it's rectangular and it's not at the hip area. So it breaks up the look a lot. And then it also has this sliding joint, which is necessary for transformation. And just because of the way that works, you don't typically get a, a very smooth like line here. Um, even at the hip here, it's more narrow at the top 
than it is here so it doesn't look like one cohesive piece and then there's this weird ridge here which i, I don't get i i would have preferred it just being plain he does have double jointed knees friction knees nice neat deep knee bend so you can get a lot of dynamic posing going on here he does have a little bit of ankle tilt uh, it's mostly obstructed by the shins so you get a little bit you can get forward and down heel is separate uh, and that's it for articulation so I did a lot more comparisons if you had any interest in looking at the live stream I did a lot more comparisons um, with other characters but I'm gonna go ahead and speed this along and let's go ahead and get into transformation uh, let's move this off to the side so it's not distracting. So transformation is really complicated. Um, well, not really. It's not. It's actually not bad. I think it's one of the better ones, especially of the latest um, movie releases like uh, Hoodlum and Coot and RC especially. Um, but there are some pieces. So I did break mine, um, but I think that was more my fault with some combination of um, it being uh, kind of a weird, maybe bad design. So just be aware of that. Um, I'm going to do it differently than from the instruction manual because I think it's just a little bit easier the way I do it. So the first thing we'll do is deal with the lower legs. So we'll go ahead and pull back on this section here. You can do that with both legs. Fold up the toes. And then uh, this section here will unpeg. We'll do one leg at a time. And this blue section and this part of gray section needs to come out as one piece. And this is where the section um, is very fragile. So even on the one that I didn't break, um, there's actually a stress mark and a crack forming. Um, and I'll show you where it gets stressed later. But open all that up. This little piece here, you just need to flatten out. It's a, a space filler, like you can see here. Otherwise, it serves no real purpose. On this side here, same thing. Open this up. And this is the side that I broke on mine. You can see here it's completely crack cracked through. Hopefully I'll be able to get a replacement piece for that. And then um, this knee section is actually on the double hinge that works kind of like combiner wars. Uh, oh, so real quick, let's just go ahead and collapse the thighs together. So you can just scooch these in on these sliders that I showed before. But each leg independently you want to bring out. I believe this is die cast. I think the toe is die cast. There's some die cast bits here and a lot of the joints. Um, I think maybe even this knee section might be die cast. I'm not sure. Anyway, so bring this down. And this joint is really tight. So just be careful. Just collapse that in. This section here, you're going to want to open up. And it is on a tiny set of sliders. You're going to want to slide that down come on there we go and you want to keep it oriented like this so when it folds up you want to have these the flat sections facing the front because they're going to fold down like this but they kind of get in the way you'll you'll see how they work later but that's really it for the leg that's all you need to do you do that on both sides Un unpeg this get this super tight knee down on that double hinge like so and again on the slider you want to slide it down like that you just keep these open for now you're going to tab both of the legs together and then there's an over and under tab here uh, to get this to work you actually have to open up the leg and then there's a sliding joint um, you can't just slide it anyway. There's actually a ridge here, so you have to get a position a certain way. Slide it down. And then what you also want to do is kind of push down on this so that this section, this die cast silvery section, um, needs to rotate around. So here, let's go ahead and slide these inwards first. Take care of this over under tab. And so when you bring this down, you want to push down on this so that these blue pieces will come all the way down and around. It's I, I don't really get how these work, 
Other than you kind of have to just push these down like that. And then these piece, these blue flaps will will fold out later. You can do that now as well if you want, but you're they're gonna move, so I would I'd just deal with it later. Get these pieces like that, cleared around the toes, and then this is gonna close a little bit later. So leave this like that. All right, come to the waist. We want to rotate 180 degrees. Fold this hip skirt up like that. And then the upper body, we want to untab the neck like we did before when we were swapping pieces. Untab the backpack. Fold this up. These side filler pieces, you're going to flip these up and away. You're going to pull back on this. It has two pretty chunky pegs here. And then this piece come around. This piece will, you'll straighten out. And there's another piece down here. You want to get this down on this double hinge, right here on this light double hinge. And there's another piece here that you're going to want to open up. It's hard to get reach in there. Um, if you got a spudger tool, definitely use it. Come on. I wish it was there was a little nub or something. But anyway, you get that out like that. You want to rotate the backpack 180 degrees. Uh, 90, sorry, 90 degrees down like that. And then you're going to rotate 180 degrees at this whole section. So you're rotating at this base section here, not just the waist. So everything comes around. And then this will tab in up here. like so. Then you can see the front coming together. All right, now let's deal with the backpack and arms. And oh, well, actually the first thing we'll need to do is get the head tucked away. So reach underneath here and you can pull up the dashboard. You're, you're gonna need to do that all the way. Straighten that out. Pull on this backpack piece here, which will, and you wanna pull this as far back as it goes. And now we'll release this section here. On these set of hinges, double hinges, you want to rotate them down and then push the head forward. That will That is what will give you clearance to be able to rotate the head forward. Once you get around this way, rotate the head around. And this neck panel, you're going to want to flip forward into the forward position. This silver piece here that's on, you're gonna rotate that entire section through. Remember, you have to have this all the way open or it will have clearance issues. Rotate all the way through until the neck tab that we saw before comes through. Then you can close that up. And then the head, the head fin piece actually goes through a hole that you can actually see the fin come out on, on the alt mode, which is kind of weird. So you'll know you got it right if this Tiny piece sticks out just a little bit. You can see it just rising out. Now rotate the arms at the uh, die cast pieces, and then these will collapse inwards. You can't collapse these in un until after you rotate these this seat in, otherwise it won't work. Now you can go ahead and close up the dashboard again. And now you can see the top of the car all coming into into, into position. Uh, okay, let's deal with each of the arms. The arms are actually pretty cool. You're going to pull down like so. And then pull up here. This piece on the forearm will come around. And it is on a slider, so you want to pull it out of the tab, slide it down, and then open it all the way up. Then you just want to close it. As far as the hand positioning, it doesn't seem to matter which orientation. I've tried it out this way. I've tried it out this way, which is the original packaging. Um, the instructions seem to sh seem to show it this way, so I'll just go and do that. Close this up, and you'll see that tab goes in there. You do need to come onto the inside of the bicep, the inner side of the bicep. Open up this panel, and this is on a set of rockers that come out. Fold this in. And that's why it has these uh, 
filler pieces here, these blue pieces, because of that joint, um, which is kind of an eyesore, but not a huge deal. And then you have one arm done. Same thing on the other side, we'll just speed through this one. Remember, open that up, open this up, flip this open. Remember to slide it down on that slider. Tab that in, and we have the side and thrusters. Sorry, I got another call. So we're gonna close this up. So now that we have the arm all done, uh, we're gonna rotate this in. This piece is gonna seat in here. Uh, the big thing here is uh, this section is on a set of hinges. So you wanna rotate this in, but I recommend only rotating it in like halfway and keeping it splayed open because this will give you the most amount of clearance. So when you come down here, you're gonna close all this. Oh, what happened? There we go. Remember to get the seat down. This bottom of the seating area will tab into these uh, tabs that were on the back of the thighs. So just remember to have this straightened out. Uh, also at this time, remember to have these flat pointed, flat sections facing forward, not the other way around, because otherwise you're gonna have to deal with that later. So just start closing this up. And then bringing these arms down into the front. You'll see this kind of uh, tab here that is kind of a over under tab. And then the, this weird looking tab here, it's like two tabs. You would just wanna push in on that until it tabs in. Now the difficult section here and where the stress happen, happens is now you have to get this tab underneath the shoulder and this tab underneath the forearm section. Uh, all while trying to get this to seat all the way in now. So that's where that's where the stress is happening. So just be careful, maybe pull out on this, pull down on this, like so. And once it's in like this, then you can give it a squeeze. But let's do the other side first before we attempt to do that. So again, bring the arm down. Oop. This section, this little tab that was part of the knee, make, make sure to have that down. You have this over under tab. I'll go in there, hopefully. And then this front section, which will tab in. All right, so again, um, just be careful. Maybe pull out on this section here just a little bit to get that in and then push this rear section in. And now you can see that's starting to want to seat in. There we go. And it should close up pretty, pretty well here on both sides. I can't get the gaps completely removed like here. That's just the way the figure is. Uh, so you'll have slight gaps, but it's not a huge deal. All right, this hip skirt, uh, it comes in tab pretty easily. Just go ahead and untab it, rotate it around, and there's two pegs there, like that. And finally, dealing with this section, just make sure everything's compressed in, like so, and then you're just gonna close this up, like that. These pieces, you'll push down to make sure that they wrap around here like that. Make sure the toes are all flat. Um, oh, actually, before we flatten the toes out, so these blue little tab sections here that I said that kind of move around, just flip those around and push them inwards so that the die cast piece ro rotates around. You want to have them kind of flush here. And then you can close up the toes, straighten this out, and straighten out the fin. And there we finally have Jabber in alt mode. And he's a pretty good looking alt mode. Um, he's very sleek and slim. Um, I didn't originally like this mode that much. Uh, I didn't think it was as good as the Unique Toys one, but I think it is more accurate. Um, whether that's better or not, I'll leave it up to you. A couple of things that I, I've noticed. One, this section should be a different color here, like kind of blue here. I don't know why they didn't paint that, uh, the second thing is, it has a lot of the knee kibble down here. So when you lay it down, it actually is kind of 
floating. It kind of almost looks like maybe by design they did that. So like makes it look like it's hovering, but it's always hovering kind of upwards. Uh, the seating area, uh, it's not really a seating area. You can bring in some of the minifigs, like the, the most recent spike. Uh, there's just like no room for the legs to go in unless like you push that in all the way and then you can kind of get his feet in <laughs> like that. You can, oh, and this, is up. this, guy, this guy sucks, so. Um, you can try to do that with the other one, the older one too. So he doesn't really sit in all that well. But who really cares? Who's really going to display their figure like that? Um, I think the backside should be a little bit wider. But by and large, I think it's a, a pretty good looking uh, alt mode. Very sleek, very dense. I did a comparison on my live stream of the weight. I think he's like one pound, two ounces or something like that uh, compared to the um, Unique Toys one, which is eight ounces. So a pretty significant uh, weight difference. Like twice, this is more than twice the weight, I think, if my math is right on the ounces. So yeah, he looks pretty good. Let's do a quick 360. Again, he kind of floats. The instructions do show him uh, using um, the Fans Toys flight stand. I don't have one of those, uh, so I don't really know how that works. But it does show it. Uh, I, I imagine it might be with this chunky tab, but I don't remember how that works, the, the tabbing thing. I thought it was like kind of like a clip, so I, I'm not really sure how that would work. It's not very obvious. Weaponry. Th it, there's no real articulation aside from this thing. Uh, weaponry, you just plug into this kind of um, section here. You can see with those little notches to help friction it, this in. Push this in like so. Do you ready? Oh, sorry. You have to flip the handle, flip the handle down, and use this notch or tab. There we go. <laughs> Looks kind of funny there. The other weapons. This one, you use this tab, like I said, which is kind of odd, like that. So it's asymmetrical looking. I don't really like that. This one, you flip down the handle and flip up the rear handle not really handle but whatever peg piece like so uh that's really it i don't think there's any other way to store the weaponry anywhere else at least that i could find uh some comparisons i don't really have any other vehicles in alt mode aside from streak and I'll do a comparison with Blur if you guys give me a second and I'll transform him. Uh, the other Blur, Buzzing. Bringing in Unique Toys. Blur, you can see just how much how more, much more massive this is. So they do definitely um, achieve that Fans Toys uh, mass shifting that we've seen as of late, which is nice. So like I said, it does. this one does flare out a little bit more on the back. Um, but I think as far as like a kind of a nice compact, like you can see just how big this one is in comparison. So I don't know if this is a a, a, a better looking alt mode, um, but I think it's definitely more accurate. So, and as far as being able to see people inside, um, he has more of an ability to do that. But I, I do think this guy looks much more accurate. So that's it for the comparisons. Let's go ahead and get him transformed back into robot mode and finish off the review, which is already getting super long. So first thing we'll do is come to the back and this is again where a spudger, or if you have really good fingernails, you can reach in here. Well, let's open these up first. Reach in here and pull up on this. Just kind of pull all these things down like so. Uh, and then we're gonna start releasing all this. Remember, like I said, this you want kind of want to open up this entire section. Just a little bit, loosen it up, mostly to allow you to get that clearance out of here. Um, so be careful when you pull these front sections, they're tabbed in very tightly. Um, be, that's how I, I think I stressed this more. So just hold on to this while pulling out on these side tabs. 
because they're very beefy. Oh, sorry, you have to un unpeg this first. So make sure to unpeg this and close this up. And then pull out on these side pieces. There we go. And then you want to maneuver this as much as you can without, again, feeling like you're stressing something. To just kind of get this out of the way because you need to get these arms up and out. So let me try this. There we go. Doing that, just release that a little bit. And then hopefully I can get this one out without breaking it. There we go, like that. Same thing here, kind of release this. Kind of pull this down and out like so. So it's kind of droopy like that. Then we can go ahead and pull these arms out. Get them up. Get this whole lower body down. Uh, I'm just going to deal with the lower body just because um, it's just nicer just to get this out of the way and because it's so simple. So we'll go ahead and flip this up and then slide that die cast piece back up. Here, let's, let's separate these just so it's a little bit easier. And you want to slide on that slider back up like that. So this die cast piece should line up kind of like that. Same thing on this side, like so. We're gonna go ahead and flip the toe out. You can flip the heel out if you need to. Um, the only other thing you have to deal with here is remember this section. So this needs to now, die cast piece needs to come out and in. Sorry, that, that went really quickly. So basically you need to get this die cast section rotated back in like this. So before it was down, just push it up like that. Same thing on this side, although I got this one kind of jammed in like that. So you just want to rotate this up and in like so. That way you can open this up. Get it slid inward like that. All right. And then we'll go ahead and close up the rest of this once we get this double hinged knee all the way up and down. Remember to get this piece straightened out. And you're rocking up on this unpainted die cast piece, which again on mine is super tight. Oh, and this piece went back down. So again, you need to have this die cast piece up and in like that to allow you to free up. This way you can collapse this in. This section here, remember to rock it back and down to this position and fold it up like so. This little blue filler piece, rock it out 90 degrees and then 90 degrees at the other joint. So it kind of sits like this. And then we're gonna wanna close, uh, not this part up, but we wanna close it up from this gray piece like that. So it all kind of folds in together. Uh, if you have pr trouble pushing this in, it might be because your toe, or your not toe piece, this little pointy piece might not be positioned correctly. So just adjust that a little bit, Oop. like that. Close this up. Mm. Come on. Why isn't this piece going in? All right, well, let's, let's deal with that after we close this up. Oh, it doesn't look like this is all the way seated. That's why. So again, making sure that this is all the way in like that. There we go. And then this should close up like that. And the foot went back in. This blue piece, you just fold it flat here. Doesn't really matter where that goes. And then the thigh will shift outwards. Same thing on this side. Remember, this is gonna be shifted inwards. This is come up on that die cast piece, folded flat. This piece is gonna, which was positioned like this, rotate it out. And we're gonna fold in
Oh, this piece keeps wanting to rotate in. There we go. Um, we're gonna rotate at this gray piece hint here. So get this in, position this blue piece. Again, like so. So it all comes together. Like that. There we go. Get this closed up. With the thigh shifted inwards. And there, there we go. Um, let's deal with this piece. Untab this. Fold in the nose cone. Remember to bring this down this light blue section down as much as possible so it's kind of resting on the crotch plate. And then rotate that whole section around. Bring this up, and now you can rotate at the lower waist. And now his lower body's all set. All right, coming to the upper body, uh, let's deal with the floppy arms real quick. Just pull up on this, rotate this around. Remember this is telescoping, so you want to telescope it up. And you'll see this notch here where this tab will go in. Close up the arms. Get your little tool to open up this panel. Pull this blue piece out and then rock in on that double hinge. Close that panel up. There's one arm done. Same thing on the other side. Close this up. Why isn't this going in? There we go. Coming to this side. There are some floppy bits, as you can tell, just kind of floating around. Uh, there's no way to get around this, unfortunately, aside from trying to get those floppy bits done as soon as possible. Go, close that up. Uh, these pieces are going to rotate down on the die cast. And remember, we have to extend these outwards. We're going to pull back on this piece here on the backpack, if I can manage it. There we go. As wide as possible. Push up on the dashboard as far as possible. And then we're going to start rotating the blur head. Remember, halfway through, you do have to switch it around so it's facing the right orientation. And then swing that through. Again, you want this in a 90 degree so that the clearance will come through. All right. All right, so we're almost there. Last thing you need to do here is bring that tab in. And you're gonna rock up on this, down on that. You're gonna to need to open this tip up a little bit before you can peg this in. Otherwise it gets in the way. Oh, so here's another thing. This tab, if you don't fold it all the way closed, it gets in the way as well. So just be careful about that. Get that tab out. these side pieces and then close everything up and we should be good to go almost. There we go. Fold in this panel here, fold in the neck panel, close this piece up. And finally we're back in robot mode. So final thoughts on this guy. Um, I think he is um, a better overall figure than uh, unique toys blurring, uh, buzzing, um, which kind of makes sense. I mean, that figure is quite old. Uh, they've had quite a while to, to get this one out. And um, I think, again, given that the modern stylings of the MP have gone towards a little bit more flat, 
um, less detailed, this guy probably will make sense on your shelf a lot more. The quality seems really good aside from that one piece here, which is the concern. Um, and as far as the other quality pieces, uh, they feel really good. The articulation is pretty good overall. Uh, the lack, lack of ab crunch, I know we've been kind of spoiled with ab crunches. I don't think that's a huge deal. I think he still looks really, really good. Um, the weaponry is whatever. I don't really care about Blur with weaponry all that much. But it's nice that he does have a target master, which I guess I'll transform down. Transform. Just bring the legs down. These rotate. This comes down and pegs in. And straighten out the arms. That's it. So it's it's nice that he does come with a target master, I guess, but I really don't care about any of like the masters. Like I guess the headmaster is the one I care the most about, but any of these masters, like breast masters, um, headmasters, uh, target masters, they're just all whatever. I'm just interested about the core figure. And I think this guy does uh does accomplish a lot with the probably more than needed complexities of this transformation. But you can't argue with the looks, I think. He looks really good. Uh, as far as the blue, um, I do get people getting upset about that too. Like, it'd be nice if we just saw colors that we were supposed to get and get them. But I think this blue looks really nice. So I don't have any issues with it. I wasn't following the thread, but it seems like that was a sticking point for a lot of folks. But I think it looks quite clean, um, butt flap aside. And aside from that one pizza, hopefully I can get some replacement parts. Uh, he has a really interesting transformation and not nearly as frustrating as some of the others we've seen. So I'm um, pretty happy with that. I think this guy's the best of the movie line that we've gotten from Fans Toys. And I think we'll be happy with him in, in your collection. Uh, I think the other thing to consider is that this guy's $105, which is a good price for him, um, considering that Unique Toys Buzzing was, I think, 110 originally. So I think he's also a pretty good value. But yeah, what do you guys think? Do you guys like him? Do you guys like buzzing better? Um, what are your thoughts? Let, let me know in the comment section below. Hopefully both the live stream and this full review were helpful to you guys and making your decision. If so, please give it a like, share, and subscribe. The likes actually really do help um, and keep me motivated, so I do appreciate it if you do that. Uh, as always, if you want to keep up to date with my reviews and my live streams, which I, I usually only announce um, ahead of time, uh, a day or so in advance, uh, if you click the notification bell, you'll get notified when I post stuff uh, so you'll know when those live streams go live. All right, that's all for today, everyone. Hope you have a good one.